Welcome friends. Today I am starting with a new lecture, mini lecture series on clinical anatomy and today's mini lecture series will be based on subclavian steel syndrome. Subclavian steel syndrome is also known as subclavian steel phenomenon and in this phenomenon we should know the normal anatomy of the subclavian arteries and the vertebral arteries. So we will first look into the normal anatomy. Suppose this is the left subclavian artery which will supply the left upper limb. Okay. And this is the right subclavian artery which will supply the right upper limb. Okay. We all know that the subclavian artery has been divided into three parts based on a muscle which is known as scalenous anterior muscle. From the first part there arises an artery which is known as vertebral artery on both the sides and this vertebral artery will ascend in the neck pass through the foramen transverse area of the upper six cervical vertebra and through the foramen magnum it will enter into the brain cranial cavity and in the cranial cavity it will join to form another artery which is known as basilar artery which will lie in front of the brain stem and it will supply then supply the brain so let us see it is supplying the brain now what happens in the supply stream suppose there is an any obstruction in the first part of the supply artery proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery suppose there is a obstruction there the cause of the obstruction could be any cervical rib or any atherosclerosis at this level okay so if there is an obstruction there will be loss of blood supply to the right upper limb is good to the brain it will be okay because there is a collateral circulation from the other side vertebral artery as other side vertebral artery is normal okay so what happens this if this is normal then blood will easily go to the left upper limb the supply to the left upper limb is normal the blood will also go through the left vertebral artery it will go through the left vertebral artery and supply the brain okay but as you can see this area is devoid of any blood there will be a low pressure zone low pressure zone and here blood is present so it will become high pressure zone we all know liquids flow from high pressure zone to low pressure so this vertebral artery the right vertebral artery will steal some blood from this left vertebral artery and there will be a retrograde of blood flow of blood into the right subclavian artery and through this retrograde flow there will be blood supply to the right upper limb okay so in this way right upper limb also gets blood supply through stealing of blood from the left side this thing is known as subclavian steel syndrome so what are the complications of this as this side is stealing blood from this basically you see it is stealing blood from the brain you can say so there will be less blood supply to the brain that will cause ischemic neuropathies in the brain or ischemic neurological deficits like uh, syncope fainting it can cause also there will be difference of blood pressure on both the sides there is not so much of blood coming to the right side but there is some blood is coming suppose this is 100 mm of hg hypothetically we are taking this side as 100 mm of hg on blood pressure this side would have 50 mm of hg okay so there will be a differential blood pressure when we take blood pressure on both the arms these are all the features of the subclavian steel syndrome so i think uh, you have all benefit from the concept of subclavian steel syndrome why this syndrome is occurring and where is the problem and what is the clinical or anatomical basis of this subclavian steel syndrome so thank you very much 
and I will be meeting again in the next mean lecture series of another chemical anatomical question. Thank you friends. Thank you.